good morning everyone and uh, this will be a series which will have our uh, dgca module 11 b 1.1 short notes based on each sub module according to car 66 syllabus and uh, the very first sub module that we have is theory of flight and it is having two parts it is basically divided into two parts the first part is aeroplanes aerodynamics and flight controls and in the part two we have high speed flight so we will be starting with the very first part which is aeroplane aerodynamics and flight controls and uh, this pdf that you are seeing i will be providing a link a drive link and uh, all the pdfs of all the sub modules which i will be jotting down from uh, the particular books and uh, many other informations from other internet um, websites and everything will be in this particular pdf and this will be easier for you to revise before your exam and it will be also easier when uh, you will be going through this particular series, a video series and then if you just revise this PDF it will be better for you to actually remember the things. Okay now to start with the very first topic that is aeroplane aerodynamics and flight controls. Uh, we can see that the directional controls of a fixed wing aircraft takes place around the three axes. The first axis is a lateral axis and then there is a longitudinal axis and the third axis is a vertical axis. Now what is a lateral axis, what is a longitudinal axis and what is a vertical axis. We will come across these one by one but just know that these are the three axes based on which an aircraft can actually um, you know you can maneuver the aircraft or you can actually fly the aircraft and control the aircraft in different directions. So uh, the control surfaces, the control surfaces that are required to move the aircraft in these three axes are called as uh, flight control surfaces or maybe uh, you can call them as uh, control devices and uh, they are fixed on the aircraft in what way they are either hinged or in a movable condition they are fixed on the aircraft and uh, from those hinge points they can move uh, either up or down or maybe on left or right okay and there are two types of um, primary sur surfaces that we have the first one is a primary or main flight control surface as we can see in this PDF and in uh, point 2 we can see that there are secondary or auxiliary control surfaces. Okay, So now next we can see that uh, this is a picture of the three axes which we have talked about and which we will be requiring in the entire chapter henceforth. So the very first axis that we can see is a longitudinal axis okay, that is passing through the center, center line of the fuselage. About this axis, whatever the action that takes place, that the aircraft, if you just imagine that a very thin wire or maybe a rod is passing through from the nose till the tail of the aircraft and the aircraft can rotate about that particular wire or rod, whatever you are putting through it. So this movement, either it's a uh, left banking or maybe it's a right banking is known as the rolling action. Okay, and that is done by the help of these elevators. Sorry, this is, that is done by the help of these ailerons. Okay, there is a left aileron and there is a right aileron on two different wings, and they move differently. Means so if one aileron goes up, then the other aileron will go down. We will come across what are all these things. Now, let's shift to the next axis, which is the which is the lateral axis. Okay, about this axis the aircraft can actually make its nose go up or go down means it can either climb or it can descend and how does it actually get this particular input from the from the elevator that is mounted on the horizontal stabilator surface okay from the trailing edge of the in the it is hinged at the trailing edge of the horizontal stabilator surface in the same way we have the third axis which is the neutral axis or maybe the vertical axis and about this point the aircraft can go either left or it can rotate on the right side which gives us the directional stability okay in the picture also you can see it's all written that lateral axis gives us the longitudinal stability the vertical axis gives us the directional stability and the aileron or the uh, roll it gives us the longitudinal stability uh, sorry lateral stability about longitudinal axis now how this particular um, uh, direction stability is controlled? It is controlled by the help of the radar input given from here, okay, by the pilot. Now, let us go to the 
three primary flight control surfaces. The first one is aileron. Aileron is fixed at the trailing edge of the wing and it moves alternatively. It moves alternatively means, I'll tell you why we say that it is moving alternatively. If one aileron goes up, then the other will go down. Also, automatically, they will not both of the both the ailerons on both the wings will not go uh, up together or down together. Okay, otherwise the main action of the roll will never take place. So that is giving us rolling about longitudinal axis. Then we have got elevator which is fixed at the trailing edge of the horizontal stabilizer, and it is giving us the pitching, right? It is giving us the pitching about. It is giving us the pitching about the lateral axis okay that's either the aircraft's nose is going up or down either it is climbing or it is descending then we have the rudder which is giving us the directional stability uh, and it is also fixed at the trailing edge of the vertical stabilizer and that is providing us a motion and that motion is called as yawing okay it helps us to either go left or turn right now let us shift to what is Basically, these primary control surfaces are okay. We can see that the primary control surfaces are the simply smaller aerodynamic devices. Okay, they are also aerofoil in structure. They are also aerofoil in structure like this. Okay, they are also aerofoil in structure like this, and they normally have a single spar about somewhere over here. Okay, they don't have two two spars like this running parallel to the length. Because they don't require, they are their width is very small. This width is very small as compared to the wing. So they require mainly one spar. So one spar is enough. They don't require this spar. Okay. So that may be a torque tube. I mean that may be in the shape of a tube like this, circular tube, or it may have, or it may have sections like this, I sections like this. Means if I just the if I just cut the cross sectional view then the beams may have this type of a structure okay this type of structure you will find this type of things are available on the uh, rails the where the on which the trains run so this is the i beam structure and there are also rectangular uh, box beam structures and uh, maybe some other type of uh, section t section or maybe some other section to provide uh, a proper uh, so that it can support a proper bending load of the entire span of the aerofoil okay now we can see that they are typically made up of what they are made of aluminium alloy structure built around a single spar member or a torque tube as i have already said and they have got ribs okay they have ribs like this they have ribs like this these are the ribs and this is a single spar passing through like this and these ribs are also having and then finally they are covered with a skin okay so we can see that the lightweight ribs uh, in order to make them lightweight what is done is basically they are stamped out of stamped out from flat aluminium sheet stock okay there are aluminium sheet stocks from which they are stamped out means holes are being made holes are being made like this in them in order to reduce the material and also to reduce the weight because with these holes also it will give the same structural stability okay there will be no structural differences or uh, strength differences it will still uh, it has been proven it has been tested that it will still provide the same structural strength as a solid piece like this would have provide okay as a solid speed like speed like uh, piece would have provide but that same is not required uh, because that will be increasing more weight when we will be adding more number of ribs like that so some parts are actually stamped out or holes are made and those materials are taken out from here okay because those materials are not required so in that way it becomes lightweight now in heavy modern aircrafts or in some smaller gl uh, gliders and home built aircrafts it is made by the help of composite materials which does what that basically reduces the weight and increases the strength that reduces the weight and increases the strength of the control surfaces. Now next we can see that there are primary flight control surfaces which need to be properly balanced. Now why this balancing is required because it suffers from excessive fluttering. Fluttering was fluttering is basically the abnormal shaking or the vibration 
that takes place due to the when the air passes like this when the air passes like this over and from the bottom surface so due to this passage of air as the air leaves this boundary it either rotates up or maybe it goes down like this so there are when it detaches from the surface there are certain distance disturbances caused here okay due to those disturbances this as they are mounted at the end of the wing so or maybe uh, the at the end of the uh, control uh, horizontal stabilizer or maybe vertical stabilizer so they will come across the maximum disturbances in in the upward or in the downward direction causing huge vibrations so in order to resist that their cg cg we all know what is cg cg is center of gravity where the entire if there is a there is a um, uh, let's say metal plate like this so what is what will be cg it will be the geometrical center about which the entire weight of it will be acting so if we have a control surface like this so let's say this is the cg point somewhere over here as maximum mass we can see is almost in this section so cg will be coming almost about this particular point let's say so if it is hinged somewhere over here if the hinge point is somewhere over here okay and the shaft passes like this then its cg point should be ahead of it so that maximum force or all the weight should act before the or ahead of the hinge point in order to balance it because one whenever the loads will be imposed on them whenever the air loads will be in, imposed on them so they will not vibrate but now let's imagine if there would have been a aerofoil like this with a hinge point here and with a cg over here okay so about this point all the forces are acting so whatever the loads that will be imposed on this that will that will be very closer to the cg that will be very closer to the cg and that and it can move the cg right it can move the cg if loads are applied over here it can easily move this cg point so if the cg is moved or if the center of gravity of a particular structure is moved then the entire structure can actually be pushed in any direction in any abnormal way that will be causing more and more vibration to take place so in order to resist that we can see that the cg is uh kept before or in other words you can see that the hinge point is kept aft of the cg point to prevent flutter which is abnormal shaping shaking of the control surfaces okay in the picture we can see is given okay the the cg has been kept ahead of the hinge points now let's go to the very first primary flight control surface which is ailerons now what is this this is basically those structures which provide the lateral stability about the longitudinal axis this is the longitudinal let's say this is the longitudinal axis which we have already studied this is the longitudinal axis okay and it provides the lateral stability why because rolling takes place in the lateral direction in this direction okay the aircraft either from the back if you see the aircraft will either bank in this way or maybe in this way right so it is the lateral stability about the longitudinal axis this is the longitudinal axis about which this will be the lateral stability either going this way or maybe in this way so uh it helps us to uh, it helps the aircraft to roll next they form the part of the wing surface area as you can see they form the part of the wing surface area these are the wing tips of various uh, different types of ailerons and uh, different types of outboard wing ailerons mounted in different types of wings and they are normally mounted at the outboard section of the trailing edge okay because uh, at the outboard section with a very minimum deflection okay with a very minimum deflection it can provide a maximum output or a maximum roll now it is moved by the pilot when his control yoke or joystick will be moved when the control yoke or the joystick will be moved either on the left or on the right 
I'm sorry over here it will be left sorry it will be left left or right not right or right it will be left or right and the aircraft rolls accordingly okay if it is put in the left direction the aircraft will roll in the left direction if it is put in the right then the aircraft will bank towards the right now how does it function you can see in the picture both the ailerons move in opposite direction one goes up okay one is going up this side and the other is going down now the one uh, now the direction in which you want to actually bank over here they are banking towards the right side so the right wing should go down so if the right wing has to go down then let's say this is the wing and in order to reduce the lift what we can do is we have to break this camber okay we will be putting the elevator uh, sorry we will be putting the aileron on this side up so that the surface area is decreased now this is the surface area which is producing the lift so as the surface area or the camber is decreased now on this side the lift will be less so it will go down so as the aileron goes up the wing will go down so to assist this movement towards the right side what we can do is we can increase lift on the left side okay which will assist this particular down going movement of this wing so to assist that we can do the opposite what we can do is we can increase the camber area by putting down the aileron of the right left side left side of the wing okay which will be increasing more camber area and more lift will be generated so this side will go up and this side will go down and the aircraft will bank towards the right section now you can also see one thing over here that the radar had been radar has been turned towards the right side now why this is required we don't require radar to uh, bank or roll but we do need radar to bank or roll even we need elevator also to some extent because whenever the aircraft will be turning either in the left or in the right direction the input from the radar is required to change the direction quite easily okay to change the direction quite easily so in order to assist the banking or the rolling we need a radar input also and in order to maintain when whenever the aircraft will be banking on the banking on one side what will happen it will also lose some height or it will actually not be in the altitude where it was before banking or rolling so in order to even maintain the height we require some elevator output as well so whenever we are banking remember there are three inputs taking place there is a radar input there is the ailerons input and also the elevator input which is not shown in this picture but we do need the elevator also to some extent and these three functions accordingly or uh, in a uh, you know as, as a group they work together to actually give us a coordinated turn which is called as a coordinated turn with all the coordination taking place now that is all about how an aileron actually functions to provide a role now what are the mechanisms which are employed in this type of a rolling movement the pilots request or the pilots input request or input for aileron movement and roll are transmitted from the cockpit to the actual control surface in variety of ways depending on the aircraft what are the ways there can be control cables and pulleys like this there can be control there can be pulleys and control cables like this okay which can actually move certain certain things okay that may that may move something else that may rotate something else so these are the control cables and these are the pulleys this type of arrangement can also be there and there can be push pull rods okay which will be either pushing or pulling the uh, particular mechanisms then there can be hydraulic units there may be cylindrical arrangements hydraulic cylinders and a combination of all these things along with some electrical input in today's modern aircraft can also take place so in modern high performance aircraft the inboard ailerons are also used to roll the aircraft at high speed with minimum deflection so in modern aircraft you can see in the picture it's given that there are inboard ailerons as well inboard ailerons this is the outboard aileron which is generally found in every structure every uh, aircraft uh, but there are inboard ailerons as well whenever the speed is at a very high uh, speed the aircraft is flowing we don't need the outboard aileron to function because outboard aileron if you put input to the outboard aileron the wing will be deflecting the wing will be deflecting too much okay with a very minimum input the wing will be deflecting too much like this 
ओके सो ह्यूज डिफ्लेक्शन इज नॉट रिक्वायर्ड सो एट वेरी हाई अल्टीट्यूड द इनबोर्ड एलर ऑन द मूवमेंट ऑफ द इनबोर्ड एलर ऑन इज इनफ टू गिव यू द कॉर्डिनेटेड बैंक दैट यू वॉन्ट नाउ गोइंग टू द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट दैट इज द स्पॉयलर्स सो वॉट आर स्पॉयलर स्पॉयलर्स दे आर हिंज टू द अपर सर्फेस ऑफ द विंग टू रिड्यूज लिफ्ट एज वी कैन से बाय द नेम दे आर स्पॉयलर्स सो वॉट बेसिकली दे आर स्पॉयलिंग दे आर स्पॉयलिंग द लिफ्ट सो वेन दे आर स्टोर्ड अप और रेज अप दीज आर द स्पॉयलर्स यू कैन सी विद रेड एरो इट हेज बीन शोन दे आर इन सीरीज वन बाई वन इट इज लाइक स्पॉयलर वन स्पॉयलर टू स्पॉयलर थ्री स्पॉयलर फोर एंड दीज वेन गोज अप दे विल बी एक्चुअली ब्रेकिंग द कैम्बर and the surface and the air flow that is passing over the wing will be disturbed over here okay will be disturbed over here so that will be decreasing the lift decreasing the speed also to some extent and that can sometimes assist the aileron that can sometimes assist the aileron in banking in a particular direction so let's say if we are banking towards the right side right side so if these spoilers are up so sorry not in that day. if these spoilers are up along with the elevators along with the ailerons if these spoilers are also up along with the this is the aileron okay this is the fuselage section this is the aileron of the left side increasing lift this has went up to decrease the lift this is the aileron of the right side this is the spoilers of the right side which will also go up to decrease even more camber and disturb the laminar air uh, air flow and more lift can be decreased and easily the aircraft will uh, just bank towards the right side okay so they assist the ailerons and at low speed this can be actually utilized but at high speed this is not required the outboard ailerons are capable enough to just roll with a very little input you don't require um, uh, at uh, high speed all these things so what will happen automatically this will be engaging there is a certain mechanism which will automatically engage after a certain high speed and only the ailerons will be taking over the rolling actions then we have the elevators which is responsible for the pitching action okay it allows the aircraft to pitch about the lateral axis it allows the aircraft to pitch about the lateral axis uh, pitching means the aircraft's nose will either go up or down according to the input given by the pilot if it needs to climb the nose will be going up if it needs to descend then the nose will be going down so we can see that they are controlled by control cables and push rods just like ailerons from the cockpit and in heavy aircrafts in today's modern world they are, they are actuated electronic electronically from the cockpit with uh, some electronic mechanisms which are very easy to control and uh, with very minimum mechanical effort put in them and the maximum mechanical effort that is required to actually move such huge control surfaces with such high air load they are actuated by mechanic uh, mechanical way like there will be screw jacks or maybe hydraulic cylinders or hydraulic actuators which are uh, rather called as hydraulic hydraulic actuators so they will be utilized to move this huge mass of the control surface okay why huge mass at because the air load will be too much on them so basically their entire weight will increase at that time so you need more and more force so that force is not possible by the pilot to put mechanically by his arms okay he is not that capable enough to put that huge uh, uh, effective or effort to move such a big elevator surface at a high that high speed so we need some mechanical input so you can see in this picture is also given there is a screw jack or a, it's called a trim motor or a screw jack which can actually move the entire entire horizontal surface now what type of surface is this basically what type of control surface is this we will come across so we normally know that there is a horizontal surface and there are elevators either going down or going up like this but there are certain such mechanisms which have been developed in today's modern world where the entire piece of this stable stable letter which is rather called a stable letter why because it is a stabilizer as well as a elevator so the entire piece can actually go up like this or can go down like this okay the entire piece of the or the entire span of 
the horizontal or the vertical even the entire span of the horizontal stabilizer can either go up or go down so movable horizontal tail section called the stabilator is a control surface that combines the actions of both the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator and the entire function together when they entirely function together and this type of an arrangement is called as a stabilator okay and this entire stabilator can be moved by various mechanical ways some actuators and screw jacks and all these things and there is a variable incident stabilator which is referred to as any horizontal stabilator in which the angle of incidence as i've shown in the picture the angle of incidence of the horizontal stabilizer is adjustable and this is a stabilator and this type of stabilizer is you can call this as a variable incidence or horizontal stabilizer stabilizer okay is a variable incidence horizontal stabilizer where the entire piece of where the entire piece of the thing moves together okay it's not only the elevator that moves the entire control surface can move and why that is required basically the entire control surface to move because uh, if you just move a smaller just small elevator area so you need more input mechanical input but if you move a move a bigger area you don't need that much of mechanical input with a minimum movement of a such a huge area of the entire horizontal stabilizer will give you the proper desired action or proper desired effect that you want okay by varying the angle of horizontal stabilizer to adjust pitch less drag is created and the elevator size and the deflection may be reduced okay as i have already said now there are certain such type of elevators which are not mounted aft of the main wing which are mounted forward of the main wing which is known as canard okay canard and canard utilizes the concept of two lifting surfaces where the elevator surface is has been brought forward before the main wing this is a main wing and it has been brought forward of the main wing this also generates some lift to hold the nose up okay and it is located in front of the main wings and also air, it is also in air foil shaped and uh, the air foil shaped aft wing aft wing is this wing is now known as the tandem wing configuration okay it is now called as the tandem wing configuration then we have got radars radars are used to move the aircraft left or right about the um, neutral or the vertical axis as we have already seen previously so in some aircraft it is linked to the nose wheel steering mechanism also because on ground if, if you have to move the aircraft just by putting the nose wheel steering mechanism it is it is sometimes difficult to actually turn the aircraft effectively and due to rolling friction and many other things with the ground so if the radar is also utilized along with the steering mechanism then that will be easy okay if this is the let's say this is the nose wheel this nose wheel nose wheel is either rotated in the right or left direction accordingly with some certain angle to rotate the aircraft about uh, i mean to take a left turn or a right turn on the ground so if the radar is employed along with this then it will be easier for the aircraft or easier for the pilot to actually maneuver the aircraft on ground so they there are split radars in some aircrafts split radars like this split radars like this let's say this is one part this is another part one of the other so you don't require both of them to operate both of them will only operate when it is a low speed and you require a huge deflection to be made but when it will be a high speed maybe only one will operate any one will operate okay then you have got yaw dampers yaw dampers is basically whenever the fluttering of the rudder will take place yaw dampers are used to stop that fluttering okay yaw dampers are used to stop the fluttering so what will happen they have got some sensors the yaw dampers are having some sensors which are put into the hydraulic which are actually which actually signals the hydraulic power control units or the pcus which actuate or stops the rudder fluctuations okay it will not allow the huge vibrations of the radars to take place but if this automatic movement is sometimes excessive okay but this automatic movement of balancing the radar vibrations is sometimes excessive that if it is it is moved in an excessive way then that may actually cause fatal accidents okay that is the reason a type of a limiter which is called as radar limiter has been placed in the radar area where it does not allow the radar 
to move more than a certain angle if not asked by the pilot or if not initiated by the pilot okay that the yaw dampers cannot actually move the radar to a very huge deflection in order to stop the uh, fluctuations or the vibrations that are taking place so in order to do something good if it does something bad that will be uh, that will have a catastrophic effect okay that will have a fatal uh, consequences so uh, i mean the aircraft may uh, lose all its controllability and it may turn to certain direction it may actually um, lose all its control and can fall down and crash so that's the reason limiters have been kept so that only pilot can actuate it up to a maximum secondary or auxiliary control surfaces i think these we can uh, start in our next series and uh, in order to make this uh, series uh, with uh, you know uh, within some certain limit time limit i am not increasing this uh, particular video series and not making this too lengthy because that will be difficult for a lot of people to actually catch up because this is for those people basically those who want to revise and they don't get time so it's basically made for them whether they are working on field or maybe uh, working somewhere else and uh, or maybe they are in the college or class and they have just passed out or maybe uh, they want to revise for their college or whatever is the case so uh, it's basically for the revision purposes it's not a um, i mean thorough class or a thorough explanation going on so that's the reason i just want these videos to be as short as possible like i'll try to make it within 20 to 25 minutes if possible so that it will be easier for you to understand and all these pdfs links will be provided uh, in the description section you can uh, check all those drive links from there you can get all the pdfs this pdf also you will get this pdf has been made uh, for the entire sub module one and in the next video i'll be coming up with the secondary auxiliary control surfaces till then goodbye and uh, just revise keep revising if you find any doubt ask me in the comment section thank you